chance. Uh, <laughs> talking about AI, I, I realized like, oh, well, this is a genie that once it's out of the bottle, you're never getting it back in. That's true. There was a video that you tweeted about one of those Boston Dynamic robots. And yeah. you're like, in the future, it'll be moving so fast you can't see it without a strobe light. Yeah. You could probably do that right now. And no one's really uh, paying attention too much other than people like you or people that are really obsessed with technology. All these things in, are happening, and these robots are... And did you see the one where P PETA uh, put out a statement that you shouldn't kick robots? Probably not wise. <laughs> For retribution. Their, their memory is very good. I bet it's really good. It's really good. I bet it is. Yes. And getting better every day. It's really good. Are you honestly legitimately concerned about this? Are you Is like AI one of your main worries in regards to the future? It, yes. It, it's less of a worry than it used to be, uh, mostly due to taking more of a fatalistic attitude. Hmm. So you used to have more hope, and you gave up some of it, and now you don't worry as much about AI. You're like, this is just what it is. Yeah, pretty much. Yes. Hmm. yes. It's not, it's, it's, but no, it's not necessarily bad. It's just, it's definitely going to be outside of human control. Not necessarily bad, right? Yeah, it's not. It's not necessarily bad. It's just, it's just outside of human control. Now, the thing that's going to be tricky here is that it's going to be very tempting to use AI as a weapon. It's going to be very tempting. In fact, it will be used as a weapon. Um, so, the the on, the the on ramp to serious AI. The danger is going to be more humans using it against each other, I think, most likely. That'll be the danger. Yeah. How far do you think we are from something that can make its own mind up, whether or not something's ethically or morally correct, or whether or not it wants to do something, or whether or not it wants to improve itself, or whether or not it, it wants to protect itself from people or from other AI? How far away are we some, from something that's really, truly sentient? Well, I mean, you could argue that any group of people, like a, like a, a company is essentially a, a cybernetic collective of people and machines. That's what a company is. And then there are different, there's different levels of complexity in the way these companies are formed. And then there are sort of, there's this sort of like a collective AI in in the Google sort of search, Google search, you know, the where we're all sort of plugged in as like like nodes on the network, like leaves on a big tree. All f and we're all we're all feeding this network with our questions and answers. We're all collectively programming the AI. And the, the and Google plus the all the humans that connect to it are one giant cybernetic collective. This is also true of Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all these social networks. They're giant cybernetic collectives. It Humans all and electronics all interfacing and constantly now, constantly connected. Yes, constantly. One of the things that I've been thinking about a lot over the last few years is that one of the th the things that drives a lot of people crazy is how how many people are obsessed with materialism and getting the latest greatest thing and i wonder how much of that is well a lot of it is most certainly fueling technology and innovation and it almost seems like it's built into us it's like what we like and what we want that we're fueling this thing that's constantly around us all the time and it doesn't seem possible that people are going to pump the brakes. It doesn't seem possible at this stage where we're constantly expecting the newest cell phone, the latest Tesla update, the newest MacBook Pro. We're, we're, everything has to be newer and better. And that's going to lead to some e incredible point. And it, it seems like it's built into us. It almost seems like it's a, an instinct that we, we're working towards this, that we like it. Mm-hmm. Our job, just like the ants build the anthill, 
our job is to somehow or another fuel this. Yes. Um, I mean, when I made those comments some, some years ago, but it feels like we are the biological bootloader for AI, effectively. We are building it. And then we're building progressively greater intelligence. And the percentage of intelligence that is not human is increasing. And eventually, we will represent a very small percentage of intelligence. But the, the AI is informed, strangely, by the human limbic system. It, it is, in large part, our id writ large. How so? Well, you mentioned all those things, the sort of primal drives. Mm -hmm. um, there's all, all the things that we like and hate and fear. They're all there on the internet. They're, they're a projection of our limbic system. <laughs> it's true. It, no, it makes sense. And the thinking of it as a, I mean, think of thinking of corporations and just thinking of just human beings communicating online through these social media networks as some sort of an organism that's a, it's a cyborg. It's a, it's a combination. It's a combination of electronics and biology. Yeah. This is in, in some in some measure like it's the, the success of these online systems is the is a, is sort of a function of of how much limbic resonance they're able to achieve with people. The more limbic resonance, the more engagement. Mm. Whereas like one of the reasons why probably Instagram is more enticing than Twitter. Limbic resonance. Yeah, you get more images, more video. Yes. It's tweaking your system more. Yes. Do you worry about, or wonder, in fact, about what the next step is? I mean, a lot of people didn't see Twitter coming, that you know, communicating with 140 characters or 280 now would be a thing that people would be interested in. Like, it's going to excel, it's going to become more connected to us, right? Yes, things are getting more and more connected. They're, at this point, constrained by bandwidth. Our input output is slow, particularly output. Output got worse with thumbs. You know, we used to have input with 10, ten fingers, now we have thumbs. But I images are just, are also, uh, they're a way of communicating at high bandwidth. You take pictures and you send pictures to people. That sends that's, that communicates far more information than you can communicate with your thumbs. So what happened with you where you decided or you be took on a more fatalistic attitude? Like, what was there any specific thing, or was it just the inevitability of our future? I try to convince people to slow down, slow down AI, to regulate AI. This was futile. 